Today we're going to be talking about a lot of different things about predator-prey systems. And in the first part of this problem, we've been given two different predator-prey systems. The first one is the system on the left defined by dx over dt and dy over dt. And the second one is over here on the right. And in this first part here, we've been asked to determine which variable, either x or y, represents the predator and which one represents the prey. And we've also been asked to determine if the growth of the prey population is affected only by the predators eating them or by some other food source in the environment. And similarly, if the growth of the predator population is affected only by the number of prey or by some other food source as well. So I just wanted to take a look at each of these two systems, and later on when we're done with this, we'll talk about other things related to predator-prey systems. But this is the first thing we need to be able to figure out how to do. So in a predator-prey system, what we're interested in are what I like to call the interaction terms. And the interaction terms are where we see x and y multiplied together. So if you notice in this first equation, dx over dt, this first term here only includes the variable x, whereas the second term is the product of x and y with some constant coefficient. Similarly, in the second equation for dy over dt, we have this term only involving y, and then the interaction term where x and y are multiplied together with a constant coefficient. We're interested in the interaction terms where we have x and y multiplied together. In a predator-prey system, whichever interaction term is positive, which in our case is in the first equation here, dx over dt, because we have positive 0.001xy, Whichever one is positive represents the predator population because what this is saying is when the two species come together, when they meet one another, is their population increasing or decreasing? So if you imagine, for example, wolves and rabbits, if a wolf meets a rabbit in the wild, which one is gonna walk away from the situation? The wolf is, the predator is. So because this interaction term here is positive, this equation, this first equation, must represent the predator equation, and that means that this variable here, x, represents predators. So we know that x represents predators. In contrast, you see that in the second equation, the interaction term where x and y come together, where the predator and the prey meet one another, the interaction term is negative, and that means that when the two species meet one another, the population is gonna be declining. The prey is gonna get eaten. So that means that y here, represents the prey. So we know x is predator, y is prey. Similarly, if we look over here at the second system of equations, we see our interaction term on the end again, this interaction term and this interaction term, and we see one is negative and one is positive. So this positive one here means that this must be the predator equation because the predator population will increase when the two species come together. So predator is represented by y, whereas this interaction term here is negative. That means the prey is gonna get eaten. That means this x variable here must represent the prey. So x is prey. Now we're also asked to, for both of these systems, determine whether the prey population is affected only by the predators or by some other food source. Well, the first system over here on the left is really the standard form for a predator-prey system. And what we know is that if we only have this first degree term here, so this equation for dx over dt, we have a first degree term for x, and then we have the interaction term. And then similarly here for dy, y over dt, we have a first degree y term and then an interaction term. In standard form like this, we know that neither prey nor predators are affected by any other food source. So in this system, prey is affected only by predators. The prey are eaten by the predators, but there's no other food source or anything else in the environment that's affecting their population. Similarly, the predators only eat the prey. They don't eat anything else in the environment, they're affected only by the prey. So when we see something like this in standard form, we know that predator and prey are only affected by one another. In contrast to this second system on the right, where we see additional terms coming in. So notice that for dx over dt, we have the first degree term for x, and then the interaction term, so we know that they're affected by the predators. But we also have this third term here, this term in the middle, which means that the prey are affected by some other food source. So what this means is that prey are affected by predators because there's an interaction term. So because there's an interaction term, we know that they're affected by predators. They're getting eaten by the predators. But we also know that there's this other variable here, which means that they're eating some other food source, and that food source affects their carrying capacity. So we could say 
some other food source that they're eating or carrying capacity. So we can say carrying capacity. Whereas the predators only have here this interaction term, which means they're being affected by the prey, and this is in standard form, so there's no other, other food source to affect them. The predators are only eating the prey. So on the right here, we can say that the prey are eating some food source upon which they're dependent, and they're being poached by the predators, and the predators are only eating the prey. Now let's change systems and talk about competition, cooperation, and predator prey. Okay, so in this part of the problem, we've been given a different system of equations, and we've been asked to determine whether this system represents a system of cooperation, competition, or a predator-prey system. And we've been asked to find equilibrium solutions and describe the significance of each equilibrium solution. So the first thing we need to answer is, is this a system of cooperation, competition, or a predator-prey system. And figuring that out is easier than you might think. Really, all you're looking at is the interaction terms, like we talked about before, the terms where x and y come together. So you notice for dx over dt, we have a first degree x term, a second degree x term, and then our interaction term where x and y come together, we have the product of x and y. Similarly, in dy over dt, we have a first degree and a second degree y term, and then an interaction term. And all we're looking at is the sign on the interaction term. So in our system, the sign on this interaction term is negative. The sign on this interaction term is also negative. So what we know is that when both signs are negative, as in our case, our system is one of competition. When both populations are decreasing, we have a system of competition. So we'll call this competition. When both signs are positive, we have a system of cooperation. And when one is positive and the other is negative, we have a predator-prey system where the positive interaction term is the predator system and the negative interaction term is the prey system. So you just look at the signs on each of these terms to determine whether or not it's a system of cooperation, competition, or a predator-prey system. Now we need to find equilibrium solutions and describe the significance of each one. The way that we're gonna do that is by setting both of these equations equal to zero and solving for coordinate points that are solutions to both equations. So we'll set both of these equal to zero. As we do so, let's go ahead and factor some things out. Notice that in the first equation here, this equation for dx over dt, we can factor out a 0.001x. We have an x variable in each term, and that'll really simplify this equation. So if we factor out a 0 0.001x, x, then 0.5x divided by 0.001x gives us 500, minus 0.004x squared divided by 0.001x just gives us 4x, and then 0.001xy divided by 0.001x just leaves us with the y, so we have minus y, and we'll set that equal to zero. We'll go ahead and do the same thing here with our second equation. We'll factor out a 0.001y because that's the smallest coefficient value on this second degree term here. So we'll factor out 0.001y from this second equation. For the first term here, we'll get 400. For the second term here, we'll get minus y. And for the third term here, we'll get minus 2x. And we'll set that equal to zero. Now, since we have both our equations factored, we can set each system equal to zero separately. And essentially here we have four systems. We either have the system 0.001x equals zero and 0.001y equals zero, or we have the other one 500 minus 4x minus y equals zero, or 400 minus y minus 2x equals zero. Those are the obvious two. But then we also have these mixed systems here where we have 0.001x equals zero along with 400 minus y minus 2x equals zero. And the fourth one, the opposite case, 0.001y equals zero and 500 minus 4x minus y equals zero. So we just need to solve each of these systems to see what we get. So in the first system, if we solve this top equation for x, we see that we get x equals zero. If we solve the bottom equation for y, we see that y equals zero. That would give us the point 
0, 0, and the significance of that is just that we have a 0 population. And what that means is that there are no predator and no prey. The population of both is 0. That's one possible case of equilibrium. We also have this second system here, and if we add 4x and y to both sides, the first equation becomes 500 equals 4x plus y. The second system, if we add y and 2x to both sides, we get 400 equals 2x plus y. If we subtract this second equation from the first one to solve these simultaneously, we get 500 minus 400 is 100, 4x minus 2x is 2x, and y minus y is 0. So you see that we have 2x equals 100. We know, therefore, that x is equal to 50. And if we plug x equals 50 back into one of these, for example, this one, we can see we'll get 500 equals 50 times 4, which is 200, plus y. Subtracting 200 from both sides, we get y equals 300. So another solution here is the solution 50, 300. And in that case, we know that we have stable populations. At that point, neither predator nor prey will be increasing or decreasing. Both populations will be stable and will hold at this value. Now, if we solve this third system here, obviously we'll get x equals 0 in the first equation. If we plug 0 in for x into the second equation, this term will go away and we'll get 400 minus y equals 0 or y equals 400. At this point, what this tells us, we have the equilibrium solution 0, 400. We know that if the population represented by the x variable is 0, the population represented by the y variable will stabilize. The population will stabilize and flatten out at 400, and it won't increase or decrease from there. So this is a stable y population. In the opposite case, our fourth system down here, if we solve this first equation for y, we see that y equals 0. If we plug 0 in for y into our second equation, we get 500 minus 4x equals 0 because this y value goes away. We get 500 equals 4x or x equals 125. So we have the fourth point then here, 125, 0, which means that when the population represented by the y variable is at 0, goes away completely, goes extinct in this area, we have a stable x population, the population represented by the x variable will hold right at 125. So just to recap, that's how you find equilibrium solutions, and we talked about the significance of each one. We also talked about how to determine whether or not a system represented cooperation, competition, or a predator-prey system. And remember, before we talked about how to determine which variable represented a predator population, which one represented a prey population, and whether or not growth of either predator or prey was restricted only by the other's population or by some other food source in the environment. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.